Well, good morning, folks. This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Welcome back to Southeast Louisiana. Well, folks, it is the 5th of August. Bee season. Wow. Man, oh man, as crazy as it was, did it just all of a sudden get quick and turn around and fly by. Like it seemed to drag on when we were, when we were sweating the honey flow. And uh, now, uh, here it is August. It is 7.30 in the morning. It is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The humidity is in the 90 percentile somewhere. And I just got back off vacation. I was on vacation for two weeks and the bees have not been touched. We haven't had rain since we left. It's been now three weeks without rain. I think we got eight one hundredths of an inch, so everything is dry. Absolutely no nectar whatsoever that I know of would be coming in, but we don't know that for sure, because I haven't been in the hives. So I gotta go to work into these hives and do my annual assessment after harvest, my post-harvest assessment, and that's what I'm gonna do today. So, vacation was wonderful, but it's time to get back to work in this immense heat. I was up in northern Minnesota, as you well know, if you're watching any past videos, which is actually going out today, and uh, enjoyed my time up there. The, the day we left uh, from Moose Lake up near the border, uh, it was 44 degrees in the morning. Here my glasses are fogging up. We canoed up into the Quetico Provincial Park in Ontario. Uh, at the border, we stopped at the ranger station, and the young lady... Uh, park ranger there um, <laughs> She was giving us the brief you have to go through the brief and, and, and do the do's and don'ts of the park um, You know because they really want to keep it wilderness like it is and uh, She told us uh, just one thing she said she, now it's very hot this year And you need to be careful because it's humid and I think the humidity was like in the 70s 80 percent something like that maybe at, the, at best and it was I think the hottest it probably got was like 85 we were loving it so uh oh my glasses are fogging up it's warm but what a great vacation what a cool spell i got to enjoy for a while but uh, now it's back to the real brutal heat it's been in the hundreds every day so i got to get to work early this morning and uh just go assess hives what am i assessing for i'm assessing simply for strength health queen right and stores that's it um I, that's all i do and i i gotta begin treatments so i probably will do a few mite washes and see where we're at with mites. Years past, I did not do mite washes. Um, I, I would do them now and again, just random during the season. Uh, once they, you know, but, but it was difficult when I first started. I didn't have a nice little jar and you made a mason jar. And it went hard, but it wasn't worth it because I was gonna oxalic acid vaporize everything anyway, every year. And what I used to do, my routine was every September 1st that was my day to start I didn't do it right after season I would do four rounds five to seven days apart every week you know starting September 1st that time frame and I would just do that and I had great success with that but it would take me a month and it was a lot of work it did knock down the mites I'm not saying it was the most effective treatment I watched other people do other things and when I started doing it oxalic acid actually wasn't approved in the hives but it's just a lot of work and, and it drags out for so long and so doggone hot and I'm getting older, it's just, it wears you down sometimes as you got a lot of hives. So, uh, so that's kind of my mite treatment that I did. I didn't really check for mites. I'll probably do a few mite washes today. Let's see where we're standing. And then I'll go back in another video and check back behind those hives. But uh, we did hop guard last year for the first time. Didn't like it, won't ever do that again. It's just messy and it's not as effective. I guess it is if you continue to do more treatments, but the stuff is expensive. So I got some Apigard this year, but I can't start using it right now because it's getting in the hundreds and it gets a, it, it's got up to 105 the other day and there is a threshold on that stuff. Um, and the, the hotter it is, you can go up to 100 or so, but you have to do half a dose. So no matter what, we'll always do half a dose here because we'll always be in the 90s. But I'm not even at that point. I can't even do that. It is hot. So uh, about the only thing I could really do at this point in time is vaporize, but I'm not going to. Let's just see where the mites are. And we'll go from there. It's so hot, I gotta get busy. I got about three or four hours and it's shutdown time here because it'll be 95 to 100 and by, by 11, uh, 12 o'clock. It'll be so brutally hot. So let's get busy and uh, do some assessments. Well, one disconcerting thing, 
whenever I come out here is when my boxes are stacked. This is how I stack my supers, and I'll go. I'll do a video on how I stack my supers in case you guys are wondering. But this is how I do it, <laughs> really, out in the open with air and light coming through them. I'll also show you how I do my brood boxes inside um, to protect from wax moths. Dog, oh, that's what I got to do. Got to buy some more stuff. But anyway, I'll show you guys that. But when I come out here and I see bees all over this, kind of investigating, that concerns me. Because a lot of times that signals that they're out robbing something. Um, usually they're all over this too when they're out robbing. Uh, if they found a hive to rob, they get into a frenzy. And anything that looks like a box, they tend to go to and start robbing it. But that also tells me, even if they're not robbing, that they're in that mode. There's nothing out there. And they're ready to eat. So i got to be very careful this morning. And just get in, get out. And if robbing starts, I have to stop. So bad thing about doing early in the morning is robbing it can be predominant and it goes on for hours after that where in the evening if they start at least it gets dark they will come back the next day if it's a frenzy but at least you got a chance to stop it and really one of the best times to inspect out here it's mid-afternoon around one it's hard to breathe it's so sticky and humid but uh, around one in the afternoon but you, you can't, you'll die you'll die out here all right, folks, as you can see, we're here in the bee yard, ready to go. I need to make sure my smoker is lit. I think it wasn't lit good. Oh, yeah. And it's going to be a long video. I'm sorry, folks. I'm not going to show you every single hive I assess. I'm just going to show you the highlights of what I'm doing and then anything that unusual pops up because it's already going to be a long video. But what I do want to tell you is I'm going to run into a couple dead outs at a minimum. And you say, well, Mike, why didn't you fix it? Well, I tell you, sometimes we do have some swarms late. And in this case, this one, I know for sure swarmed either right before or, or right during the harvest or right after the harvest. And this colony, I'm, I'm actually glad she's gone. But I'll tell you what happened was they, they this colony, I every week was going in in the spring and breaking cells down. I should have remedied her then, but I thought she would stop eventually because she's a one-year-old, she was a one-year-old queen yellow dot queen and she I, I know where i got her from so there's a reason she's swarming she came from a swarmer every week she would build, they would build cells for her i'd break them down find her verify she's there make sure no cells were in there keep on going got right to honey harvest and they seemed to calm down didn't see any more cells for two weeks in a row and had supers on them plenty of room they built me two boxes of honey plus this half a box if you remember in a video we shook them down through that excluder and within that week sometime they swarm because next thing i know the population was next to nothing on the front i go on vacation it's now three weeks four weeks since then i tell you right now i'm seeing ants going in and out they didn't requeen and so sometimes i do have those summer harvests that when i break them down to two boxes they're normally fine but this year was kind of funny but even when i break them down to two boxes after the harvest leave them some honey the dearth is on I still have those one or two or three that swarm on me and I'm telling you late summer swarms do not requeen hardly at all I'd say 10% of the time uh, they die so if I usually if I wouldn't have been on vacation what I probably would have done was combine those bees um, but it I noticed it like a day or two before and I wasn't going to try and start doing all that manipulation uh, with the dearth on the heat there was robbing going on so I left them alone and uh, they obviously are gone one another one I knew had swarmed uh, before I left and I saved a box of honey for a friend and let them have it because they're short uh, they're gone I got to open that up and clean them out basically I gotta get this comb open make sure the wax moths haven't destroyed everything completely they probably have and then open them up I'll open this one up real quick and we'll take a quick gander at uh, is there any wax moth damage? I see a lot of ants and sugar ants, so Could be wax moths. Did they get slimed? The one thing about summer is when they do uh, Requeen uh, don't requeen which is normal um, They get robbed out before they get slimed and that's always a good thing And so at least you can get the equipment if you can get it before the wax moths. I tell you a couple years ago, I finally started re um, realizing different colonies different varieties predisposition to swarm I used to not believe that I figured all bees swarm just had to control them better or whatever that's as we grow in beekeeping but this the, a couple years ago I started really noticing different ones that were swarming and ones that weren't with minor manipulations and uh, this one here capped it off this one here confirmed every belief I had <laughs> that it just gonna flat out 
if they're predisposed to swarm they're going to be swarmers get rid of that genetic move it out so the honey super's in good shape it had brood in the middle and we got a couple wax moth paths but i think i can save that yeah we're good on that so that's good store it i'm going to do a video on how i store my brood comb for y'all because i get all, i get questions every year i got videos out there if you look back but i want to be sure uh, to do one so everybody has an idea um starting some wax moth down there not bad i see wax moths and carpenter ants so they've laid eggs so these got to be frozen immediately meaning today immediately because i need to get through some hives before it gets too hot yeah see we're in good shape so i'm gonna save the equipment look at that wax moth so we're gonna save this equipment got a couple couple that have gotten in here full of pollen that's why they go for them pollen ones first but I, i'll get rid of these pollen ones anyway can't really save that stuff you can freeze it but uh they tend to tear it out anyway so but this, this colony was not a great loss to me it was a fight to keep them around they did make honey i'm happy grateful. but we're gonna leave that like so and i'll come back and get those and gonna all the good empty comb we're gonna freeze it all out I've got a spot in the freezer for it and I'll store it and save it. So we've salvaged that. That's so there's the plus of it all. Uh would have been better had I saved the actual working bees and all, but uh didn't work out that way. All right. Let me show you what I do for an assessment. And uh maybe we'll do a mite wash on this one. Uh this is a swarm I caught in a swarm trap. Another thing I could be doing, I'm gonna watch for any gaps I've got at the top, but I probably should be putting entrance reducers in for robbing but I don't have the heart it's so hot I probably need robbing screens I'm gonna smoke them pretty good get them all down but uh, I don't have those It'd be a good investment one day looking for beetles too so there's a few of course we always look for the queen on the lid I definitely want to see the queen if I'm doing mite wash that's always great all in all, if you talk about beetles, that's not a bad beetle count. Um, I don't see a lot up here. Now the bee, the bees do, the queens do slow way down laying this time of year if we're not feeding them and moving them, uh, you know, manipulating them. So, it is something that I will see. Smaller nest for sure, but let's hang this up. Alright, that's honey. I don't see much brood up here, so they're probably just using this as a honey storage. If you ever do cutouts, you'll notice the top of the hives are full of honey all the time, same like this one is. There's some fresh nectar, something rolling in. That's interesting. Uh, so probably not going to see much in here. This is their storage. This is where I say I don't need to feed them. This thing is full of honey. This one's Got fresh nectar down the center where the brood was, so the back fill the brood nest. That's a winter configuration. That's what we want. They look good. I'm gonna be quick. Don't like open nectar out. Alright, so I'm seeing open nectar. Looks like middle three frames have just got some nectar. The outsides are full of honey. That's enough stores. Let's put the top act together. That's how I do. don't want to rob and I got a lot of hives to go through so I'm gonna pull the top box for now let's look in the brood nest see if what kind of brood nest we got who is full of honey and we didn't harvest from this one. Oh goodness I'm gonna think I might have took a few frames from it oh goodness it's the one I left the swarm in for a little while so I got some rubber bands I got a lot of bees in it so we got some brood here. It's body. She was solid though earlier. I don't think that's an issue. Could be a mite issue. Let's see what kind of brood nest we got here. She's got brood coming out. So I got a brood nest all the way across. Looks like. So that's what we want. Honey on the top, brood nest across the bottom. Again, she's not gonna Oh, that's that's whew. I'm looking for queen right mainly. So what I want to do is see if I got eggs. But this is not going to be a good frame to do it because it's a free 
floating frame no wire nothing it's a natural comb they made and it's hot it will break off so quick so rather than fool with it and take a chance we get that out of the way see some new pollen and what we want to see is eggs if we see eggs we're in business of course if we see a queen that's even better see plenty of pollen there's, there's plenty of bee bread in here and they're not going massive uh, brood building right now and I see larvae this is actually there's all not 300 bees on this frame but this would be a good frame to shake off in my box and do a wash on it'd be neat to check this one because this is one that came this is one that it's feral came from by the river now, now usually I would be done guys by now but I'm doing this for video purposes another frame that's free floating I don't want to turn it up but it she's putting brood in slow not the most beautiful brood pattern again that could be a, a mite situation yeah see that that comb was about to break out but we don't want that to happen well folks I'm having some serious video challenges right now cameras and all uh, this is a very not a great populated uh, colony I see them pulling uh, we could have mite issue here I see them pulling larvae out um, which is a good thing on their part bad thing that they got the mites uh, so I hadn't seen the queen yet normally I'd be done with this colony uh, I do want to find her see if I can see her but I don't think we're going to at this point because I don't like having them open this long so they got stores I feel like she should have been on one of those earlier frames we'll double check and I'm gonna show you how I do the mite wash same as everybody else for the most part I don't see my queen so here's what we're gonna do and I almost wouldn't wash this one I just leave it alone but with uh, pulling larvae out and the such that's uh, that's a sign so I want nurse bees I'm gonna double check for my queen there might be 300 bees here don't see my queen I'm just gonna shake them let the flying bees go up all the flying bees will come up that's the bees we don't want double check I lose this light colored box because I can see the queen against it easier I don't see her in here double checking I can get a half a cup of bees out of here I'm sure as long as she's not one of them we're okay I don't see her I shake them all down in the corner like so Scoop them. I got just about a half a cup. All right, sorry guys. I'm, I'm trying to video and do this. Put it in my handy dandy shaker. It's just shy of 300, so I got to keep that in mind. I'm going to sacrifice these bees. And we're going to shake them for a minute. So shake them, shake them, shake them. They say swirl it. This is Dawn. A tablespoon and a half to one gallon uh, that's the that's the ratio and I'm gonna shake them up I'm gonna stop for a second put this back together and I'm gonna finish shaking them I really don't like it being open this long normally I'd be done with this colony colony not the greatest population but it's it's good enough it's uh it's got eggs she's laying they're pulling larvae out that would be a concern if I didn't do a mite walk so they'd be alright I don't like the population that much but uh, we just let them be bees at this point that's what i do every year they they always kind of scare me like that but anyway it's always something when you haven't been through your bees in a while how how i have how i'm so like not fluid i'm not efficient so we'll put this back in here we're going to see if the mics are an issue or not There we go so let me explain as I'm shaking this to Don uh, Randy Oliver did a uh, one of his projects where he checked different uh, types of levels of percents of alcohol versus Dawn versus a couple other things and he actually found that Dawn I think one was windshield wiper fluid there was another one besides alcohol windshield wiper fluid Dawn I, I, I thought there was another one but if y'all read about it, you know what I'm talking about as far as these leaking by the way I, I don't have that problem everybody talks about they leak so bad not that I, I've had them leak, but anyway, he found that Dawn really washed them off really well. And Greg Burns, Nature Image Farm, he of course 
uh, did some experimentation with it and he found the same so I've been using it. it's cheaper it's easier uh, I can just dump it out put fresh in foaming wise yeah it does foam but it settles out Ooh, infested baby infested yeah see there you go there's why they're pulling everything out one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen it's 14 mites they're maxed out on mites you got to have a treatment ASAP that's a lot of mites you see them all so that's bad not good now this swarm came out of the trees near the river uh, there's no beekeeper right around there close by so um, this is a feral swarm that came from there and uh, it's been on my stand since I caught it probably I can't remember which this is the one I caught early so it's been building and building and building its mite count uh, it had its brood break of course because it's a swarm but now it's been building ever since so got to get treatment on it ASAP we're gonna treat them all anyway so there you go there's a mite count I might do a few more randomly but uh, I know this whole side of the yard is gonna get mite treatments April guard this year two times uh, and blast them with oxalic acid in the winter and thinking seriously about some formic pro in the spring to keep the buildup knocked back a little bit before July all right prime example of my assessment basically I open it up I felt the top box it was super heavy didn't bother going in it went in the bottom found eggs on that one really quickly population looks okay brood pattern kind of rough like the other one probably definitely some mite issues uh, if they're hygienic and cleaning out the mites but you see bees are starting to get on here it's almost like robbing this is full of honey they don't need any feeding because it is slam full and we're gonna put that on shut them assessment's good queen right that's all I do queen right they got food they look okay populations mediocre I'll make a recording I'll record it all in my book later and that's it then I move to the next and that's all I'm doing folks all day I can tell you right now they're wanting to rob already you can look over here where I just tip these boxes up you can see bees flying everywhere so I'm gonna go through I'm gonna get busy going fast through these things I'm not gonna record much unless I see something unusual I do know I have one more out there that's a dead out and uh, I'll deal with that just like I dealt with this one hope it's say salvageable I get frames put away today and move on so let me get moving anything else comes up I'll let you know but uh, definitely gonna be uh, having to figure out how I'm gonna get treatments on these in these temperatures that I've got I may just have to bite the bullet and come out here in the mornings with some oxalic acid vapor and go after them to at least get some sort of knockdown but they got to be done what would a video be without at least showing you a queen to the third hive in I got a queen right there in the corner there she is small queen wow but this is a good queen this is a good colony made a lot of honey and she's got eggs and milk brood and we're putting her back singles I have to be very careful with they're very very light but they're bringing nectar in so I'm gonna need to get some feed on these I'll put some frames of honey in here I put that super on there to store it, it I think it's a brood super if not maybe I just put it on for space but it's empty they need food they'll get honey frames I'll give them some honey frames I got some in the freezer if not some of these bees got way too much they don't need it and we'll give them some frames of honey all right on to the next I've done those so the last two took me five minutes to do them well, here's one folks next one over i I'm, I'm, seemed i'm doing every single one that's what the other one i think is gone but this one it must have swarmed and requeened because it's got eggs and no cap brood so they've obviously just requeened uh which is one of the 10 percent it probably will as i'm telling you it's about a 10 percent rate this time of year that's good so i'm gonna put them back together and leave them alone uh didn't see a lot of didn't see any beetles so that's good um so that'll give them a chance plenty of honey in the top so i'm gonna get them back together don't want no robin to start on a wheat colony but you can see they're gathered over here this is where the bees are small nest she's just started laying so uh that's a good thing i'm gonna leave them alone mark them as keep an eye on but definitely seeing this one i wouldn't want to put april guard in i'm gonna have to do some different treatments because april guard even tells you on the wheat colonies don't put them in because you could have a problem uh, so this one here even though it's in the shade I'm probably gonna just gas it that's probably what I end up doing just because the heat right now I'm gonna end up having to just gas all these bees uh, with uh, oxalic acid vaporization all right folks I'm gonna show you what I'm seeing here I've only gotten through about five more see all the bees 
the signs that Robin's getting ready to start. I'm shutting everything down. The hive I thought was weak was definitely weak. That one's weak. That one's weak. They're terribly weak. I think what I'm seeing is mite infestation. I'm positive that's what I'm seeing because I'm seeing a lot of brood. Some of them have nice solid brood patterns, but they're very small patches, which is normal. Uh, so, but there's some that they got like hardly any bees. One I think is even queenless. And they're so full of honey, like slam, like the whole top deep is full. That's amazing to me that they haven't been robbed. There is some nectar coming, I see that. I don't know where it's coming from, it's so dry. I mean, we got oak trees dying because it's so dry. They're not dying, but their leaves are brown and they're falling. But I'm gonna have to stop. And uh, I think what I'm gonna do is just open the ones I'm pretty sure are dead. That one wasn't dead that I said was dead, it wasn't. It actually had eggs in it but so few I think what I'm seeing is a mite infestation I'm starting to see hives are I'm worried about my bees um, again it's that weird season where things aren't timed out the way they normally would be it's getting hot I gotta get in the shade anyway but uh, I'm gonna go take a water break but I think I'm gonna call it quits because the robbing is gonna start and what I'm seeing is weak hives and I don't want Robbing to start with weak hives. That's not a good thing. If the mites are that bad and all of them as weak as they already are, they're doomed. Um, I'm seeing some, some spotty patterns, some bees pulling pupae out. So that's a sign too, uh, pulling, pulling old pupae out. Um, that's a sign of hygienics, but it's also a sign that your mites have gotten too bad. So a bit of an issue here. I can't keep going though because I, I know I tell you something else. I'm not, I didn't see maybe three beetles the whole time out of six or out of seven hives eight hives i saw like two or three beetles that's a good thing because they've got space on them and you know they don't have to guard that space as heavily but they're full of honey so what do you do you know you don't take it off and some of them are up in that honey and there's small brood patterns in there um and that's normal like i say but uh i gotta get some vapor on them um i can't put the apiguard guard on with these temperatures we're scheduled to be in the hundreds for the next week or so it's just too high and they're too weak for that and I can't afford for a queen to be shut down uh, because of the apiguard. guard I can't afford that so I gotta think that through and we'll do vaporization I'll do a video on that you saw the infestation the one with few bees on that other stand that we did so that likely won't make it if we don't get them knocked down and I don't know that it'll make it now it might be too little too late but all we can do is try um, but again nothing different than I normally would do but that's how bees will do, you know, you'll, you'll think you're on the right track doing something. For years you'll do certain ways and you'll change up and you'll find a better way and it'll work and you'll stick to that. And then they'll throw you a loop. But we will persevere. We will get through it. Sometimes you have heavy losses, sometimes you have no losses. So, I'm going to call it a video. There's nothing more to really tell you about and do. That's what I tried to do. I couldn't finish. The robbing has started. Alright folks. Well, that's going to do it for me. It is a hot one. I am going to go get some water. Then I'm going to finish up getting these boxes gathered up. Uh, I appreciate all you guys watching. I hope you enjoyed this long video. Not looking good, so stay tuned. We're going to find out what happens. We're going to find out. I'll show you what I lose. I mean, I'm, that's a vlog. That's what I've done over the years. I've shown you the good and the bad. I'm not, you know, it's, it's a real deal. It's part of beekeeping sometimes. Uh, sometimes it's part of my mismanagement. Sometimes it's just the way it goes. Uh, some of this could be a little bit of both. <sighs> kind of disheartening but that's all right they're gonna be they, I've, I've been like this before and we've made it through and <laughs> we do what we do it's barry's best honey i'm mike and i do bees y'all have a wonderful week and may god bless you we'll see y'all later